indeed this is the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. And we thank the good Lord for making it possible for us to meet with you on this important occasion. We are here representing His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, who is our presidential candidate. The laws require that uh, we file nominations to be approved by the commission. We have brought with us a duly completed nomination forms and uh, let me commend you for making the forms available online so we didn't have to come here to, to pick fiscally. So we've um, completed the nomination forms in quadruplicate as required by law. We submit here attestation to the tax compliance of our candidate uh, in the form of a tax clearance certificate and then a declaration from the uh, audit service that declaration to assist uh, liability under Article 286 of the 1992 Constitution, the official receipt. And then we have a banker's draft covering the filing fees. And then we have uh, the pictures, sizes of which have been stipulated in your uh, nomination forms. And we submit the particulars of um, the person selected as the running mate for His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, who is in the person of Professor Jenana Opokwa um, We are hopeful that he's going to be the first female uh, Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. We submit here our banker's draft covering the filing fees for all our 276 parliamentary candidates across the country. We are hopeful that you will notify your district offices about this so that they don't uh, request another payment from our candidates. So on this note, we want to thank you very much for receiving us and at this point, we have the pleasure to submit the documents to you for your nomination forms. Staple them region by region.
want to thank all Ghanaians for their support so far. Um, from our rounds, there are all indications that change is in the air. Sure. And so we just crave your indulgence to secure the peace of the country before, during, and after the elections. We wish to urge the Commission to also play their role as a neutral umpire. Uh, we have concerns about the process so far, and I believe we are engaging, and that is the purpose of the engagement, so that we can uh, get uh, mutual conclusions that are acceptable to everybody. We've submitted our duly completed forms, which have been um, accepted. We are waiting for scrutiny and final response from the Commission. But we are very confident about the eligibility of our candidates, so uh, we don't have anything to fear at all. We are also very confident that all the indications across the country point to uh, an incoming change, a change that will help Ghanaians to decide their destiny and to reset our country's democracy. Amen. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, we however have very serious concerns. I'm sure you've monitored the discussions between us and the Commission in the past one month relating to the various concerns that we have raised. So far, our concerns have not been addressed satisfactorily. And for the um, purpose of those who have not heard our concerns, we have serious concerns about the credibility of the register, because the voters register is the basis for all the elections. So if you get the register wrong, then everything begins to crumble. It means you are building on a weak foundation. We have said that the register that allows people to be transferred to other polling stations, other regions without their consent, is a very, very serious omission in our electoral processes. Whenever you talk about credibility of the register, the response has always been that it is because the register has challenges, that is why we embark on exhibition. But this particular challenge actually rocks the foundation of the register itself. And it undermines the right of the people to choose their leadership and to vote at polling stations they have chosen for themselves. So if it is possible for a voter to be transferred from his polling station to a place outside his region completely, and in this case, the commission has accepted that indeed that has happened. So we ask ourselves, then the protocols for the transfer and the safeguards against transferring people against their wish have been breached. How is it possible that these protocols the commission has been calling robots, 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 on their own admission have been breached so easily? And so it undermines the confidence that we have in the voters register. As I stand here, I don't know that the day I'll go to cast my vote in Bono, I'll be told that my vote is in Bolga. And I, I think that this is the reason why we are calling for a complete audit of the IT systems of the Electoral Commission to try and answer the question as to why. Is it possible for any district officer anywhere who decides to transfer names of people to places not of their choosing? Is it possible? And they have said that it is possible. If it is possible, then we are not safe. And so we want to, we want an independent audit of the system. And 
if there is a way of breaching whatever protocols they have in place for transferring of names across country, then we will find ways of uh, checking that one because it goes to the foundation of the confidence we have in the voters' register. We have appealed to our development partners because we know a hippie country, the easiest response from government will be that there is no money to undertake that audit. That's why we've uh, contacted our development partners and they are more than willing to help us to audit the IT systems, so long as the commission itself is willing to open up. And so we are appealing to the commission that they must do the needful before we get into the, 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 the elections. And we must get a credible register before the printing of ballot papers. Because if ballot papers are printed based on a register that is not credible, then the election has been undermined completely. This is the second time since the, the coming into office of this new commission that we have had to file nominations based on a draft register. I have always said that it is wrong. And they must do everything to correct that one, because a draft register is not a register. Today, if we have to go into any elections, we will have to be relying on the 2020 register, because the, that register expires at the time that a new register has been certified and approved. So we have a register that is in existence, and then a draft register yet to be certified. So if we are filing these nominations based on that draft register, then it is very, very problematic. I hope the commission would not disqualify anybody based on the fact that a final register has excluded some names that supported the candidature of, of one particular person here or there. And before I, 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 I stop, let me clarify. When we said we have appealed to our development partners to support the auditing of the IT systems, some people have misconstrued that one to mean that we are handing over our IT systems to external partners. No. Whatever we have to do has to be paid for. So I don't see the problem where external parties are helping to support the main election. And you don't have any problem with that. Yeah. If those external parties are helping by way of funding to get uh, yeah. consultants to review the IT system to ensure that the whole nation has, credit, uh, has a trust in the register, you have problems. And it's been done before. And it's been done before. Because, uh, you know, before becoming national chairman, I've been general secretary for 17 years. And uh, I've seen so many things happening. And there were occasions where the UNDP sponsored a consultant to review the IT systems of the Electoral Commission. Heaven didn't break loose. But the effect was that the report became acceptable for all of us and everybody went into that election satisfied that nothing uh, untoward will happen to the results. That's how we, we proceed. And then apart from that, there were challenges raised about the register and the inclusion of some wrong names. Then to the then chairperson of the Electoral Commission, together with uh, IPAC, fielded another team made up of eminent persons to listen to all the concerns of the various political parties. It didn't end there. We held a public forum covered countrywide at uh, Alisa Hotel. And all the, the, those who had issues were called to ventilate those issues. And those who had responses were also asked to do the responses. A report was presented. And we all went into the elections satisfied with the outcome.
And so I don't think that this should, uh, a commission that is interested in its own credibility and in the, the, the population accepted the credibility of the results of their work would have any problems at all. If you don't have anything to hide, why are you running away? And um, you have been asking us, we have issues about missing uh, BVROs and all that, which I cannot, uh, you know, enumerate here. And you, the media people, were with some of our people who intercepted and retrieved one of the stolen BVRs, uh, uh, BVDs. So far, we don't have any response. We don't have any feedback as to how the, 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 the uh, progress is being made on the case involving those who allegedly have been arrested here at your commission and so on. This all generates some amount of, uh, you know, cloud suspicion. cloud suspicion and all that. And so those of you who have been asking us, if they don't comply, what would you do? This is your answer. On the 17th of this month, the NDC is embarking on a massive nationwide demonstration in all 16 regional capitals. Descend on the Electoral Commission offices and we in Accra will descend to the headquarters and present further petitions as to why we think that we sh they should conduct themselves in a manner that to uh, guarantee peaceful, free, and fair elections. I hope you will be with us, you will follow us, and we see where that takes us to. Thank you very much, and may God bless our homeland.